All right, so beginning on our backs. Just come down onto your mat, onto your back in Shavasana pose. So you wanna have your legs and your arms away from your body, chin slightly to the chest, and then you wanna really drop back into those wing bones of the upper back. Look for your breath. So it takes a, it takes a few few moments or minutes to kind of connect with your body, right? We tend to live in our heads and our thoughts. So come back into your body. How does it feel? Feel your breath moving your body. And just let your breath soothe your mind and open your body. Really drop down toward the ground. All right, bring the legs closer, about hip distance apart, feet parallel. All right, and then flex the heels and spread open the toes. Spread them open as wide as you can. Now, pretend that I'm just above your feet and I'm putting a pencil behind the toes of your right foot. Clasp that pencil, grab it as hard as you can. Now the left toes, grab that pencil. Point your toes with keeping the pencils. Feel the tops of your feet, get a stretch, and then release both pencils and open your toes. Now wiggle your toes. Now relax your feet and let them splay apart. So even that work in the foot, you feel how kind of the neck and shoulders and upper back kind of started getting into it, soften in that part of your body. Look for your breath again. Bring both arms up to the ceiling, palms are facing each other. All right, now listen up. Keep your shoulders and upper back into the mat. So widen your arms enough where you can feel the shoulders, the backs of your shoulders and your upper back pressing into the ground. Press as hard as you can. Draw your navel down. If you want to bend your knees, place your feet into the mat. You can do that. Now lift up. Feel yourself lifting up from the shoulders. Lift, lift, lift. So now you're coming off the floor with the upper back. Now put it back down again. Yeah, press down, press, press, press. Lift up. And press back down. Take your hands together, intertwine your fingers, flip your palms up to the ceiling and press your palms up to the ceiling as much as you can, feeling the wrists open up. Keep that and then slowly bring your arms overhead. Feel your spine extend. Feel the stretch at the front of the belly. Don't let your hands touch the ground. Just hover over the ground and press your palms away from you. Squeeze your biceps toward your ears. Flex both heels. Relax the left, left, head, left foot that is. Turn your palms so that they're facing you again, facing the crown of your head. Lift your arms up to the ceiling and lift the right leg up to the ceiling. Grab the back of that left leg, intertwine your fingers, wiggle your chin to the chest, relieving any tension at the back of the neck. Bend your elbows and feel that opening in the hamstrings behind the right thigh. Soften your shoulders. Use the muscles in your arms to do this rather than the shoulders. Breathe deeply here.
bend that knee, slide the left hand down the leg, grab the top of that right ankle, right hand comes to the inner thigh, pressing into it so that the right knee comes out to the side. Keep the thigh in that position. Take your right hand next to the left hand. Get a good hold at, for the, at the top of your ankle. Flex your foot and bend your elbows to bring the heel a few inches closer to your belly button. Shoulders away from the ears. Elbows are bent. You're using your arm muscles more than your shoulders. Flex the left heel. Lift that leg up to the ceiling. Straight up. Make sure that leg's coming straight out from the hip and then rearrange things so that you can get the, the side of the foot, possibly even the ankle, over the top of your left thigh. Right knee is still pressing out to the side. Grab underneath your left thigh, intertwine your fingers, bend your elbows, and just bring that leg towards you as you press your right knee out to the side. Right hip is what we're opening up here. Soften the shoulders, breathe deeply. Send that breath to your right hip. Bend the left knee. Now take a hold of the shin of that left leg and bend the elbows and press the right knee out. Just a little deeper, chin to the chest. So the chin tends to migrate up to the ceiling and the neck compresses. If you send it down toward the chest, you'll release it. All right, release the arms in a T position. Your palms are up. Slide that right leg over the left, so your thigh to thigh here. Bring the knees up to the chest. Soften across the upper back. And then slowly drop your legs to the left side. All the way down. All right, remember if you can't get them down to the ground, you can always get a pillow and put that underneath there, or you can slide your knees farther away from your left leg. So let your body get used to this. Now look for a really nice deep belly breath here. One more deep one. Now bring the right arm up to the ceiling. Make a blade shape with your hands so fingers are straight and they're squeezed together. Press those fingertips up toward the ceiling and feel the arm bone get lifted from the shoulder. Relax your left shoulder. Might come into play here. We don't want that. All right, now make a fist, the tightest fist you can make, and punch that fist up toward the ceiling. Press it up to the ceiling. Now release the hand, open the fingers, and wiggle all the joints, including the thumbs. Look at all those joints, right? You've got those big joints, the big knuckles of the hands, the ones in the middle of the fingers, and then just under the fingernails. Get them all. Soften the hand, lift it up to the ceiling. Now slowly bring that arm overhead and then sweep it to the right and then bring it toward the bottom of your mat and over your hip and then to the left and then overhead again. So we're circling the arm bone in the right shoulder joint. Now rather than make the movement from the shoulder joint, think about the hand leading the way, okay? And the arm just following. So you wanna keep that shoulder really loose and open to look for the best range of motion that you can get. Reverse, opposite direction. Next time your arm comes to the right side, drop it into the floor with the palm up in a T position. 
draw back your navel and take your knees all the way back up. Uncross your legs, rock your hips side to side and walk your hips toward the bottom of your mat to lengthen your spine. Make sure you're nice and straight with your teeth. Arms are not higher than the shoulders, slightly lower. All right, flex both feet. Slowly take both legs down to the ground. Pull in your navel, pull in your navel, pull in your navel, all the way down. All right, bring your arms up to the ceiling. Palms are facing each other, clasp. Flip those palms up to the ceiling, press, bring them overhead slowly. Nice, you're not gonna touch the ground, hover over the ground. Okay, nice. Flex the left foot, slowly bring that foot up to the ceiling and bring the arms up to the ceiling at the same time. Turn the palms toward you. Grab the back of that leg, there it is. Intertwine your fingers, elbows are bent to the side. Bend some more to draw the top of your left thigh towards your left torso. Soften the shoulders, chin to the chest. Breathe here, feel the hamstrings open. Bend the knee. Okay, take the top of the left ankle with your right hand, left hand, put, oh, 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 I forgot something else. Straighten, no, I didn't, <laughs> sorry. Maybe I didn't, I forgot, I don't know. Top of the right hand, or the right hand to the top of the left ankle, left hand presses the inner thigh so that the left knee comes out. Keep that leg where it is. Left hand next to the right. Get a good hold of it. Bend the elbows to bring the heel up toward the belly just a little closer. Press that left leg out to the side. See what we're doing? We're rotating the thigh bone in the left hip space, opening it, opening that hip. Flex your right heel, draw your navel down, Slowly bring that leg straight up from the hip, straight up, straight up, straight up. Now rearrange that foot or ankle on the top of that thigh. But remember, rearrange that left leg, not the right. The right one's going straight up from the hip. That has to stay that way. Now get a hold under that right thigh, intertwine your fingers, bend your elbows, and start pressing that thigh toward you as you press the left knee away from you. Soften the shoulders as much as you can. Use the upper arm muscles instead. Left hip. So this is a supine pigeon pose, right? Doing this, you know, basically the same thing you do when you do a traditional pigeon pose. Bend the right knee, let that heel drop. Now take a hold of the front of the shin, bend your elbows, bring that leg toward you again, deeper opening in the left hip. Make sure your exhales are nice and deep. Let it all out. All right, arms are in a T pose. Left leg slides over the right. Now you've got those thighs touching. Bring the knees toward you. Soften across your upper back and let the legs drop to the right side this time. So you want to move into a twist slowly. You'll get more range of motion. You know, the body has to get used to the, the fact that you're you're turning it and putting in this position. If you go too fast, the body starts guarding. All right, some belly breaths here. Feel the movement of your belly under your thighs or under the left thigh that would be. 
Notice if you're clenching your right shoulder. And if you are, just let it go. Bring the left arm up to the ceiling. Blade shape with the hand. Press, press, press. Fingers are working. Press the fingertips up to the ceiling, lifting that arm bone from the shoulder. Yeah, feel the space that you made there. Now a fist. Keep pressing it up to the ceiling. Okay, the tightest fist you can make. Now open the fingers and wiggle all the joints. Now hand is relaxed. Press the fingertips up to the ceiling. Here we go, arm overhead. And then to your left. And then to the bottom of your mat. And then over your hip and to the right. And overhead again. So feel as if the hand is leading the movement and the arm bones are just following. Nice and slow. It's going to work more deeply than if you go fast. And reverse. And when your arm comes to the left side, let it drop into the ground with the palm up. Squeeze your legs together, draw your navel back toward your spine, lift those legs back. Uncross the legs here, rock it side to side, releasing your lower back. All right, walk your hips toward the bottom of the mat, extending your spine. All right, feet into the mat parallel, about hip distance apart. Lift all 10 toes off the mat. Now drop them down into the mat. Okay, you know what? Before we go into abdominals, let's do some SI joints, some really nice deep lower back work. Bring your knees over your hips. So you're in a reverse tabletop pose. So legs are hip distance apart, Knees are over the hips, flex your heels. Bring the arms up to the ceiling, make two fists. Bring them together, thumb to thumb. Drop them in between your legs below the knees and then press your legs into your hands as hard as you can and pull your navel down and keep your lower back into the mat. Feel that? It tones the lower back and also releases the SI joints of the lower back. Press, 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 and release. Now take your palms to the tops of your thighs. Legs are in the same position. Flex your heels. Now press your palms into your thighs and your thighs into your palms as hard as you can and draw that navel down. Another one for the lower back and the SI joints. Press, press, press. Yes, you're also working your legs and your arms. And release. Bring your knees to your chest and just release there. Bring the soles of your feet together and the knees to the sides. Grab your ankles. Press your elbows into your inner thighs to open the legs some more. And stay here for a moment. Now look straight up to the ceiling. Your chin is away from your chest, right? Don't bring it to the chest when you lift. It's almost like you want to hold on to like a big orange between your chest and your chin here. Lift up to the ceiling. There's the upper abs, can you feel them? And bring it down. Lift up to the ceiling, hold, and bring it down. Lift up to the ceiling, keep it up. Bring the arms up, hands together. Make the little place for your, where your palms can get 
under the little basket where they can get under your skull, the base of your skull, open up your elbows nice and wide, press the soles of your feet together and pulse. Now, with this one, you still want to keep space between the chin and the chest, but of course, your back is a curved apparatus, right? It curves when you lift. So you can't go straight up, but just try as straight as you can. Stay lifted, straighten both legs, get them back where they were, straighten, bend to the side, straighten, bend to the side, straighten. Remember, you can always bring your head down, lift the legs up to the ceiling, bend the knees, toes are facing the ground. Ready? Keep the toes close to the ground as you straighten your legs, toes are coming down toward the bottom of your mat, lift up and scoop. Okay, we're going to scoop a big ice cream scoop. Scoop it up. Bend your knees, scoop it up. Bend your knees, scoop it up. Remember, you can bring your head down if your neck is bothering you. Bend and scoop, ready? We're gonna do it opposite. Both legs come down straight. Before they touch the ground, bend the knees, bring them back up to the ceiling. Now, only take your legs as close to the ground as your abdominals and lower back can handle. If your lower back is complaining, then you're getting too close to the ground. Then bend your knees when you're farther from the ground. Three more like this. One more. And bring your head down and bring your feet down parallel. Yeah, where we were before. All right. Take your feet to the outer edges of your mat and bring your knees in and let them drop. Now listen, your lower back should be nice and relaxed in this pose. So if they're not, take the feet far closer to the bottom of your mat. All right, take the knees back up. Lift your legs in a V position. Bring your arms. So we've got a wide V going here. Bring your arms out to the sides, flex your heels, and make circles on the ceiling with your heels. Now, notice if your shoulders are starting to crunch or tense up and just remind them to soften. How about bigger circles? Get some of the inner thighs. Notice how the abdominals are working. Now you gotta be controlled here. If you're just flailing around, you're not working really much of anything. You're just using inertia. All right, reverse, small, start small, little circles. Slow and controlled. So don't let the weight of your legs make the movement. You make the movement using your abdominals and legs. Controlled, bigger, bigger circles. And bring the legs back up. All right, happy baby pose. So bend the knees. Legs are in a V position. Grab the bottoms of your feet. Make sure your lower back stays on the ground. Don't lift it. Press into the soles of the feet as much as you can. Feel the inner thighs and groin open. Breathe here. And rock back and forth. Right to left. and release your legs back to the ground. Okay, actually bring them up to the ceiling, cross at the ankles, grab the bottoms of your thighs, flick your feet up to the ceiling and come on up. All right, before we go 
into tabletop, what I want to do is show you some next stuff. All right. So this is something called CARS, controlled articular rotation of the joints. We're going to do the neck. So listen up. I want to show you something. So sit where you can be nice and relaxed. If you want to sit on, the, on a pillow, that's fine too. All right. So there is a tendency when you're working on the neck to let the neck come forward like this. We don't want to do that. You know that that's called C9, the cervical spine. We want to go that one that, you know, the one that gets a big bump sometimes when you get older and people's neck come forward, comes forward. That's what we're working on not happening. We're going to work on the bones, the cervical spine above that point. So don't hang the, hang the head forward at all. Rather, what I'd like you to do is tuck your chin back towards your throat, okay? Almost like you want to make a double chin, but not quite that much, but tuck the chin back so that really opens up the back of your neck. Now, tuck the chin up some more and then some more, and then slowly your head comes forward, but you're not going to drop from that place I told you about. Feel as if you're rolling a tight jelly roll with your chin and then with those little vertebrae of your neck, you're rolling them into this little coil. Now slowly keep that chin tucked, unroll it. And then when you come back from to straight, now lift your chin, but feel as if you're lifting the neck bones up and off that place that I showed you up and off lift 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 but keeping the neck nice and long now we're going to start jelly roll see we got the neck long now we're going to jelly roll from the top so take the neck excuse me take the chin in lift it up and begin rolling forward you don't want to go down into the upper back just the neck Again, straighten. So this is flexion and extension of the cervical spine, the neck. Lift up, 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 up. Yeah, up. You're going up as you curl back just a bit with the neck. And then ready? Tuck in the chin. It takes a little practice. Tuck in that chin. And we're going to start making that jelly roll with the neck. and then bring it back to center. Okay, that tucking in with the chin, like the chin comes up and tucks in a bit, right? Almost like a little double chin you wanna make, just a little one. Okay, soften the shoulders. Now listen, don't turn the body or the shoulders at all. If you want to, you can keep your hands on your ribs, the bottom of your rib cage to make sure that doesn't happen. So the chin is tucked in and pulled up a little bit. And then you just slowly turn to the right, keeping the chin tucked in. And then slowly to the left, one mile per hour, really slow. Chin is tucked in, that neck is nice and long as it's making this movement, this lateral movement, back to the right. To the left again, take your time, tuck that chin in. Coming back to center, tuck the chin in and up. Okay, now take the right ear toward the right, but instead of working on those muscles, you're kind of lifting the left ear because we're trying to get the vertebrae. You're still going to feel the muscles. Try not to let that left shoulder come up. Now, it's like you're between two panes of glass. The head is not coming forward or back at all. Now to the left. Take your time. Neck is flexing to the left side. 
Lift your right ear back to center. We're going to do a move where we put this all together. Tuck your chin up and in. So you just start that jelly roll. Okay. And then you drop your right ear toward your right shoulder. Keep the left shoulder down. Now listen up. Now you take the head and kind of turn it slightly forward and up and drop that right ear behind the right shoulder. Okay, now listen up. Now lift your chin up to the ceiling and bring it all the way around. Lift, 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 lift. We're gonna bring it the left ear to the left side behind the shoulder. Now we're gonna tuck the chin up and in. Now we're gonna turn the left ear toward the left shoulder. We're gonna go take the chin and bring it down and around. Follow the collarbone to the right side. Chin to the right shoulder. Now drop that right ear back. Now lift the chin up toward the ceiling. Make a little half circle, lift the chin. Keep the neck long as you can. Drop the left ear toward the back of the left shoulder. Tuck in the chin. Bring it toward the left shoulder. Drop it down toward the collarbone. Bring it to center. Release. Okay. Table pose. Cars, you can look it up on YouTube. It's kind of controlled articular rotation. It's for, you can do it for all the joints. And I'm actually doing a program of cars, so I'll, I'll bring some of it in. I just did the neck for the past week. Now I'm going to do the mid back, so I'll bring that in too. I'll bring all of it in eventually. Little, you know, little bits of it. Okay, table pose. Here we are. So listen, this is really important. People feel like they do these easy poses and they're not doing anything. Not at all, not at all. In fact, sometimes more than the complex poses, right? You press your hands into the mat. The fingers are separated. And as you press into the mat, feel what happens to those upper arm muscles. Now lift the belly. Now press into the tops of the feet. Feel the belly some more. Bend the elbows back, drop your belly, lift your hips, send your heart forward for cow pose. Now, if you really want to fire this up, press into the bottoms of your palms. They're stuck into your mat, but you're trying to drag them back toward your feet. At the same time, you're trying to press your heart forward. Look at all that isometric work without even any movement on the outside but feel how it's all happening on the inside. Now, round your back up to the ceiling, drop your tail, drop your head, cat pose. Okay, let's let go of the neck here. Really soften the muscles of your neck as your head is dropped here between your arms. Back to cow pose, so a micro bend of the elbows back, a lifting and widening of the hips as they lift up to the ceiling. You drop your belly, send your heart forward, and lift from the crown of your head. Press into those hands. Okay, lift your belly, curl your tail under, drop your head. And then back to table pose. Take your left knee in just a little bit. Send your right leg straight out with the flexed heel. Lift the heel a little higher and pulse it to the ceiling. You're looking straight down between your hands at your mat. Your neck is relaxed. It's all in your right hip and your right leg. Hold it up a little more here. Nice. Bring that leg out to the side. Bring it down to the ground and up. Lift it up again. 
Bend the knee to the shoulder, send it back. Bend the knee to the shoulder, send it back. Feel the right glutes working. Shoulder, back. Now, keep it to the shoulder and pulse. Keep that upper, keep that inner thigh nice and high. Send the leg back. Bend the knee, send the heel up to the ceiling here, and pulse up there with the heel. Press into the hands, keep the arms and the shoulders nice and strong, don't collapse into them. Okay, keep that knee high, listen up. Swing that knee over to the left, drop it next to the right knee, could it be a little back from the right knee, Squeeze the legs together as much as you can. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Release the squeeze. Walk your hands to the right, one or two little steps. And then press forward into the palms and draw your hips back here. Gonna get some good compression. Feel the belly press into the legs. Drop your elbows if you can. You can bring your hands closer to you if you need to. And drop your head. So you're all scrunched up into a little ball, getting some really good compression in the legs and in the belly. Now, 360 degree rib cage movement here with your breath. Make sure that breath opens the back of your rib cage too. One more breath. Bring your torso up. Walk your hands back to the mat at center. Legs are still squeezed together. Release them. Bring the right knee to the ground. Press the top of the right foot to the ground. By the way, that knee is next to the left one, right knee next to the left. Now send the left leg out. Now listen, if you need to rearrange things to get better balance here, by all means, go for it. You know what I mean? The knee or the hands or whatever, but you do want those hands with the middle finger facing the front of your mat, and you do want your wrists under the shoulders. Okay, it would be mostly the knee you would rearrange for the right knee for balance versus the hands on second thought. Flex the heel and really press through it. Feel the glutes react to that. Lift it and pulse. Now, as you're pulsing, you want to keep the arms strong. You want to keep pressing the hands into the mat and lifting your belly, right? That's what keeps everything nice and controlled and strong. Now bring the leg out to the side and bring it down to the ground and up. You don't have to touch the ground, but toward the ground, almost touching and up. Keep it up, take the knee to the shoulder. I'm gonna turn around in case you forgot what, what we were doing. Knee to the shoulder and the leg straight back. Knee to the shoulder, straight back. Knee to the shoulder, pulse it there. Send it straight back. Bend the knee, press the heel to the ceiling, push deeply into the hands. Keep the torso lifted, everyone. Don't dump into this. And then pulse that up to the ceiling. Deep glute work, deep. Lift the knee a little higher, swing it all the way over to the right and down to the ground next to that other leg. They're touching. Squeeze the legs together. Feel the right inner thigh squeeze into the left inner thigh. Feel the knees squeeze into each other. Now release the squeezing. Walk your hands one or two steps to the left and then press forward into the hand draw your hips back. So if you can get really deep into this, you're probably gonna to have to walk your hands closer to you. And then drop the elbows, drop your head. Just 
Get nice and compressed and breathe here. Listen to your breath. Make sure the exhales are deep, release it all. If you're lifting your head, putting pressure on your neck, drop your forehead. Slowly lift up. Walk your hands back to the center of your mat. Release that leg. Come back into table pose. Curl your toes. Press your toe pads into the mat. Lift your belly. Press into those hands. Take those knees a few inches off the mat. If you can't do this, come up into down dog. We're going there soon anyway. Now lift the hips, walk the feet a little closer, drop the heels, and look for your down dog. Take some nice deep breaths here. Take your left foot in off center, lift your right leg to the ceiling for three-legged dog. Press forward into the hands, Draw the chest back toward your left thigh. Open your hips to the right. Lift that ankle to the ceiling. Bend the knee. Let the foot drop back a little bit. Notice how you shifted weight into the left shoulder and arm, so you need to press more firmly into that left hand. Circle the foot to get at the ankle. Yeah, open up the ankle. Reverse. Straighten the leg. Turn your torso so it's facing your mat. Flex your right heel, look forward. Right foot comes forward between your hands. So of course you can walk it there. You don't have to sweep it up there. But once you get there, just make sure the right knee is over your right ankle. Press your left heel back toward the mat. Open up the left calf muscles. Feel that. Press into your toe pads, left foot. Now straighten your right knee. Walk your hands back. We're in pyramid pose now. Bend your elbows, drop your forehead to your shin. Bend your right knee, come forward. Stop when it's over your right ankle. Take your left hand, bring it close to your right foot. Reach forward with the right arm. As you're reaching forward through the right fingertips, press back in the opposite direction with the left heel. That's gonna keep you more stable. Now lift that arm to the ceiling. Bring that arm behind you, open the right chest. And then those of you who are binders, you can bind this thing. Release the arm up and forward and next to the foot again. Shimmy your left toes back, drop your left knee gently, top of the left foot, walk your fingertips pat back, pick up your torso, press your hips forward. Left hip flexor, feel it. Take your hands to the top of your left thigh, okay? Straighten your right leg just a bit so that your torso is straight over your left thigh. Bring both arms up. Press into the right foot and the top of your left foot for stability. Open the arms and turn to the left. Drop the right hand back towards your right heel. Okay. And right arm over, press into that right foot. Balance. 
release. Bring both arms up, look forward, come forward with your hands, curl your back toes, lift that knee, look back there at that left foot, hop it forward a little bit and turn it out about 45 degrees. Make sure your feet are on different tracks here. Coming up, warrior one. Okay, if you squeeze your left butt cheek and you send that energy, whoops, down the left leg and into the edge of the left foot, you can drop your torso more deeply. You feel the support of the back. Right arm comes forward, the hand comes to the inside of the right thigh, lift the left arm up, bring it back, keep that right leg right where it is, Turn the left palm down, release the right arm, right palm down, and you're in warrior two. Rotate the right palm to the ceiling, open up those fingers, shine the palm up to your ceiling, and then lift it up and overhead, release the left arm from the shoulder. There's the right rib cage. Stay here, give it some breath. Back to warrior two, straighten the right leg, turn that foot to the edge of your mat, okay? Open your legs into a nice wide V pose. Feet are facing forward or toed in. Come down, hinging from your hips. Feel the backs of your legs open up. Come all the way down for a nice inversion here. Take your palms under your head, lift your torso, looking down at your hands, bend your right knee and feel the left inner thigh drop down towards your mat a bit. Get a nice big opening there. Other side. Again, nice and easy. And again. Back to center. Both legs are straight. Walk your hands forward. Wide dog here. Press into the hands, into the fingers. Lift your belly. Drop your head between your biceps. Send your heart back there. Now you can bend the elbows a tiny bit to soften that space between your shoulder blades, your thoracic spine area, middle back. Glide forward with your torso, walk your hands back towards your mat. Look at your right foot, turn it toward the top of your mat, walk your hands up there, send your left foot in about 45 degrees, come on up, warrior one again. Flow forward here, hands down. Lift your left heel, turn those toes forward, Bring the right foot back. Look for your down dog again. So remember, we did a supine pigeon pose. So we're not going to do a belly down pigeon pose tonight. Okay, right foot comes in just off center. Plant it into your mat. Lift the left leg. Send the chest back toward the right thigh. Open the hips to the left. Feel the right inner thigh open up with that. Now look at when you switched and turned, now you have more weight on the right arm and shoulder. So push firmly into that right hand to keep the shoulder nice and open. Bend the knee, let the foot fall back more into the right hand. Press, press, press. Now circle the foot to get at the ankle. Reverse. Straighten that leg. Turn your torso toward the mat. Flex that heel. Feel the strength of that left leg. Look forward. Space between your hands is where you're going to put your left foot. Once you get it there, line up the knee over the ankle. Press into the right toe pads. 
deeply, and then send the right heel as far back as you can, opening up the calf muscles right side now. Now straighten the left knee, the hips come back with that. Walk your hands back, fingertips are facing forward, bend those elbows straight back, drop your forehead into your shin. Feel that opening in the leg. Bend the left knee and come forward, walking the hands forward. Take the right hand close to the left foot, reach forward with the left fingertips, push back with the right heel. Lift the arm and turn. Bring the arm straight back, turn some more. If you just wanna keep the arm at the ceiling and that's enough, great, because I'm leveling up here. Those of you who want to really level up, get a bind and twist a bit. Draw that left hip towards center. It tends to jut out here. Release the arm. Bring it back down next to the foot. Torso is facing the mat again. Drop your right knee gently to the ground, top of your right foot. Come to the fingertips to lift your torso and push your hips forward. Right hip flexor. Okay, release that and come up with the torso. Make it nice and straight. Okay, bring your arms out. Turn to the right. Now, you can just stay here if you want. I'm going to level up. Okay, you just stop wherever you want. But those of you who want to put this like half camel pose into it, drop the right hand toward the right heel and bring the left arm over. Coming back up, arms straight up, turn the torso forward, come forward, hands into the mat, curl the left toes, lift the left knee and send it excuse me, right knee, and send the left leg back. Sorry about that. Walk it to the center of your mat. Bend your knees. Drop your belly into your thighs. Drop your forehead toward your shins and grab the backs of your ankles. Breathe deeply. Send the arms back, come on up. Okay, so just standing, what we're gonna do is a little shake stuff. Okay, a little shaking, which is so good for the body, okay? And it's fun. So we're not in person, so you can close your eyes or not. When we're in person, I say close your eyes because some people get intimidated doing this. All I want you to do, take your feet about hip distance apart and just start shaking. Shaking. Yeah. Just shake, 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 shake. All right. Now get the arms apart and just swing the arms to the side. Come up on the opposite foot. Bring the foot up and up and up and open up here. Inhale, bring it down. All right, bend your knees. Feet are facing forward or slightly out. Okay, get down into a little squat. Hands to the tops of the thighs. Come down toward the right. Now bring it forward. And to the left, pull the navel up. You're probably gonna feel an opening in the lower back here. Keep going, I'm gonna show you it from the side. So just nice and easy, it's really free form. So you don't have to look exactly like me. And bring it back to center. Bring it up, star pose here. Lift up toward the ceiling with the arms, 
Press down deeply into the feet, drawing the legs downward, arms upward. Bring your hands together overhead. Bring your feet together. Squeeze the biceps into your ears. And open your arms here. All right, separate your legs a little bit. We're gonna waterfall. So remember, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And when you come down, when that water falls over that waterfall, you bend your knees, take your belly down towards your thighs. Okay, here we go. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. All right, stay up here. Bring your arms to the sides. Bring your feet about hip distance, just nice and relaxed. Knees just a little bent. We're gonna go side to side here. And you're gonna let those arms just flail. Get them loose as you can in the shoulder joints and in the elbows and in the wrists. And I'm actually hitting myself with my hands and arms. And back to center, inhale up. Namaste mudra overhead. Bring it to your heart. Soften your shoulders and your elbows. Drop your forehead toward your fingertips. All right, and bring it down, belly down. And restore in crocodile pose, feet are toed in, hands stacked, forehead resting on the top hand. Now just feel how the pressure of your belly pushing into the ground when you inhale opens your lower back. Head is attached to the hands, feet are toed in. Lift your arms off the ground, the head is attached. Lift your feet off the ground. Draw your legs away from your hips and do some little flutter kicks. Stop the flutter kicks. Open the arms to the sides. Lift your chest. Take your arms close to your body and you're in locust pose. Bring your arms to the sides. Bend the elbows, stack the palms. Come back down, head and legs. Release everything here. Can you feel it's a lower back workout? A strengthener for the lower back. Palms, chest level, into the mat, close to your body. Preparing for cobra pose, feet are toed in, legs hip distance or closer. Lift your pubic bone, roll it to your belly button, drop it down. Head is looking straight down at the mat. Neck stays in this position, nice and long. Peel your body off the mat slowly, recruiting the back muscles more so than pushing into the hands and using the arms. For those of you who take cobra all the way up to a back bend, you're gonna to need to press into the hands, of course. So remember, I'm in back bend. I went beyond a cobra. You can stay a cobra if that feels good. Come on down, and as you're coming down, draw those elbows in close. Take the shoulders away from you. Keep the back of the neck long. Kiss forehead to the mat. Bring it up one more time. 
awesome strengthener for the back and the lower back. Those of you who like to twist at the top, you can do that, looking over one shoulder and then the other, back to center and come on down. Forehead kisses the mat, turn your head to the side, open your arms to the sides, palms up, elbows bent. And of course, you can make your legs wider if that feels good. Feet are still toed in. Restoration and neck release. Slow motion without creating any tension. Turn your head to the other side really slowly. Head back to center, push up into table pose. Curl your tail, tuck up your belly, send your hips slowly back towards your heels, feel your back open up. Come into your child's pose and put your arms where Ever they need to be for your shoulders to be comfortable. So you don't want them ramrod straight ahead, right? You want the elbows bent. Maybe even bring the arms to your sides with your palms up. All right, taking a few more breaths there. And if you're doing Shavasana tonight, coming onto your back. So remember, you're at home. You can get a little blanket. You can put a little pillow, a really flat one, though, not very high. Um, Really better than a flat pillow would be a neck roll. If you can take a towel, roll it, and put it under your neck. Most pillows force our head too high and our heart on the neck. So if you do, do pillow style, super flat. Okay. Open up everything here. Okay, so for the next, you know, 10 minutes or less, this is your time, right? We're gonna go to this place where we clear the mind. We already cleared the body, so we're prepared to really kind of cleanse and rinse and open the mind. Because truly, right, that's what that's all you have. You, everyone experiences life through their own awareness and, and through their mind, you know, first and foremost. So let's take care of the mind. Now, of course, in yoga, when we say mind, well, let's put it this way. When I'm saying mind, I'm talking about mind space. I'm talking about everything, more your awareness, your consciousness your inner life, right? Your experiences, what you sense, what you think, what you feel, all of that. So really relax your body more deeply. Allow all the weight of your body to just drop into the floor. Don't hold up any of your weight. And now be aware of your breath. And don't control the breath. It comes and goes on its own. Just watch it.
The breath is powerful for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that when you are aware of the breath, you are in the present. And usually we're in the past or the future in our mind space. And using the breath as an anchor to now, to the present moment, is the way to peace. Peace of mind. So just to follow your breath. It does not have to be any different than it is. Just what it is, it is. Notice it. Be with it. And of course, there will be other things that come into your mind space, such as thoughts and emotions that are very tied to thoughts and sounds and other sensations outside of breathing. Just accept all of that. Don't push any of it away. All of this comes and goes. It comes into your mind space and it leaves. So there's no need to be frustrated or irritated or try to push it away. Just notice it. And then go back to the powerful tool of the breath and be aware of your breath. Now notice that even though your eyes are closed, there's a certain kind of shimmery space that you're looking into in the darkness here. It's not all black, notice that. Just notice what it looks like with your eyes closed, your visual field with your eyes closed. And if thoughts do come into your awareness, see if you can notice what that thought is and watch what happens after you notice it and watch it. it goes away on its own. Very often people identify with their thoughts and their opinions and that leads to a lot of suffering. Let's put it that way. Your thoughts just, they're just thoughts. All right, let them go. So just experience each moment as it is without trying to change it, without judging it, just experience it as it is. Each new breath, a new moment, a new beginning. Just feel it, just sense the openness. Ah. 
All right, and now bring to mind one person who you know that you will see either this evening or tomorrow. Okay. Someone that you're close to. Right? Someone that you want to be happy and someone who you do not want to suffer. And if you'd like to, just make a resolution that tonight or tomorrow, when you're with that person, to really be open and compassionate, to listen, to not react quickly. Okay, because we have a, a finite number of times that we are going to be with this person, right? We all have this person in our life for only so long, and we never know the last time that we're going to be with them. So just resolve to have that relationship be one of compassion, listening, without reacting quickly, just really an open, loving connection. Notice what it feels like when you imagine that. And then this evening, Give that same compassion and understanding to yourself. Tougher to do, but possible. And in tonight's Shavasana, if you have an intention, sankalpa or a prayer that you'd like to put within your meditation here, you can do that. And release that seed with your next exhale. And go to your breath. Just relax your mind. All right, transitioning. And when you're ready, roll to your right side, tucking your knees up to your chest, resting on your arm. And then very slowly bring yourself to seated pose. If 
Extending your arms out wide. Inhale up. And exhale, bring it down. Namaste. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Oh, I looked on the calendar. You reminded me, sing you, son. There are three more live streams, three more. We go till the end of the month. And then um, we have three more in class, too, in person. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone.